Hello, this is Steve Moyer from Moyer Marine. In this product overview, we will be looking at the installation of our seawater pump kits, as well as an overview of our complete freshwater cooling kits. Freshwater cooling systems are now used on virtually every marine engine currently being produced for pleasure sailboats. The chief advantage of freshwater cooling is the prevention of corrosion in the engine cooling jackets, located within the block, head, and manifold. Even if your engine has been cooled by seawater for many years, any further corrosion will be stopped and the life of your engine greatly extended. In addition to preventing corrosion, freshwater cooling systems also allow engines to run at higher and more efficient temperatures. If you have any long-term plans for your Atomic 4 powered boat, it would be very worthwhile considering one of our freshwater cooling systems on your engine. As an added benefit, those of you with a pressurized domestic water system can run the hot antifreeze through your hot water heater for warmer showers. While their individual design may vary slightly, most marine heat exchangers function basically the same way, and much like a radiator in a car engine. Except instead of using air to cool the radiator, marine heat exchangers pass cool seawater through the outer jacket of the exchanger. Suspended within this jacket are a series of tubes. Antifreeze is pumped through these tubes, lowering or cooling its temperature as the hot tubes are exposed to the cool seawater. The cooled antifreeze is then circulated through the engine cooling jackets, and then back to the exchanger, repeating the same loop. The seawater, which is now hot, is pumped out with the engine exhaust. This heat exchange system relies on two pumps. Your current seawater flange pump will now be used for antifreeze, and your new seawater pump for raw water. Moya Marine offers seawater pump kits in two configurations, one with the seawater pump mounted in front of the flywheel, being driven off of your existing power takeoff or PTO shaft and pulley, and a second option which mounts a seawater pump on the side of the engine, in this case being driven off the same belt as the alternator. Both kits are identical in terms of performance. The only consideration when choosing your kit is the space requirement of your engine compartment. Front-mounted seawater pump kits require a minimum of two inches of clearance between the front of the engine and the nearest bulkhead. The side-mounted kit requires very little extra space and will basically fit within the current profile of your Atomic 4. Both of our seawater pump kits are available as standalone kits if you already have freshwater cooling on your boat and just need a new pump kit, or as part of our complete freshwater cooling kit in either front or side mounted, which includes a heat exchanger, seawater pump, engine mounting bracket, belt, pulleys, PTO shaft, and many of the other widgets you will need. Our vertical heat exchanger is 16 inches tall and may be purchased as part of your freshwater cooling kit or separately. It's designed to be mounted remotely from the engine and can be mounted virtually anywhere on the boat, as long as the heat exchanger filler cap is the highest point in the cooling system. Let's start by looking at the front-mounted seawater pump kit installation. After unpacking the contents of the kit, our first step will be to bolt the pump and the pump bracket together. Uh, we're going to use the 5 16th inch bolts, washers and nuts provided, flat washers on the top, and lock washers underneath. You can actually install these bolts the other way if you like, with the lock washers and nuts on the top. It'll work either way. I like to have the front of the bracket either flush or slightly proud of the pump foot, about an eighth of an inch. You can go ahead and fully tighten the nuts at this point. Uh, I'm using two half inch wrenches. Okay, now we're gonna turn in our stainless steel tensioning bolt. We're just gonna turn it in so it's flush with the nut. Uh, 
And next we're going to put on our half inch pulley. Make sure one of the set screws lines up with the flat on the pump shaft. I like to leave about an eighth of an inch of shaft protruding from the front of the pulley. We'll go ahead and tighten down our set screws good and tight. Uh, you can use a 532nd Allen wrench or a four millimeter. Both will work. The kit includes two brass hose barbs, um, 3 8 inch NPT by 5 8 inch barb. We like to use some Permatex Aviation brand as a thread sealer. One of the nice features of the Moyer Marine 501 pedestal pump is it uses the same impeller as the Oberdorfer 202M series pumps, as well as the Moyer Marine flange pump. So this will come in handy for future rebuilds. Alrighty, our first step at the engine is to remove the six quarter 20 bolts holding on the flywheel housing cover. I'm using a 7 16th inch socket. And we'll set that aside. Using a 9 16th inch socket, we'll remove the six nuts holding on the flywheel. If you're using a wrench for this and not an impact driver, you may need to put a screwdriver or some type of a shim in one of the flywheel teeth to keep it from moving. Otherwise, you may just turn the engine over. We'll show you how we do it in a minute. After removing the lock washers, we'll put our PTO shaft on. Now, the PTO shaft only fits on one way. That is to say, the holes will only align one way. So keep turning it until it drops over. Next, put on your lock washers and snug down the nuts. The flywheel nuts are torqued to 35 foot-pounds. Now here's the shim I was talking about earlier. You'll probably need to use one. Otherwise, as you torque the nuts down, you'll simply turn the engine over. This is just a piece of eighth-inch scrap aluminum flat stock I had in my junk bin. So we'll torque all these down to 35 foot-pounds. Next step is to reinstall the flywheel housing cover. There's no torque value for these quarter 20 bolts. Just tighten them down. Our next step is to remove the 3 8 inch upper starter mounting bolt. I'm using a 9 16 inch wrench. Then you can take your pump bracket assembly, line up the hole, and reinsert the bolt. Go ahead and tighten it down, leaving it just loose enough that you can pivot the bracket assembly. Next, we'll grab our one inch pulley and tap it on. And now we're gonna tighten up our set screws so they're fully tight. Here again, using a 532nd or 4 millimeter Allen wrench. I want to double check that my tensioning bolt is turned back so the bracket can fully rest on the housing. We're going to go ahead and insert our belt. It's a little bit tight. You may have to turn the water pump a little bit for it to pop over. There we go. With a 9 16 inch socket, we're going to start to turn the tensioning bolt, taking up the slack in the belt. You want to have about half an inch to three quarter at the center. That feels pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and lock down the lock nut. You may want to check the belt after running the engine for a few hours and then retension if necessary. Now we'll go ahead and give the starter bolt a final tightening. Now you can always tweak the alignment of the pulleys a little bit by loosening the pump on its bracket and moving it in or out as needed. 
Okay, that completes the installation of our front-mounted seawater pump kit. You can now install your hose barbed with some sealer, and you're good to move on to the rest of your plumbing. Next, let's take a look at the side-mounted seawater pump kit installation. Our first step after unpacking the contents of the kit is to mount the pump to the bracket. We're going to use the two 5 16 inch bolts with lock washers. We're going to line the pump foot up so it's flush with the left of the bracket, as I'm doing here. This will make it a little bit easier when we go to install it on the engine. And I'm using a half inch wrench. And you can fully tighten these bolts at this time. Go ahead and slide your half-inch pulley on, making sure that one of the set screws lines up with the flat of the pump shaft. Line up the front of the shaft so it's basically flush with the front of the pulley. And we'll go ahead and tighten down our set screws. You can use a 5 32nd Allen wrench or a 4 millimeter. Either one will work. Get those good and tight. You'll notice there's an extra mounting hole on the bracket. You can really disregard this hole unless you have an early model accessory drive, in which case there'll be a 5 16 threaded hole on the side of the drive. It just gives you one more anchoring point. We include an extra bolt just in case you need it. The kit includes two 90 degree brass hose barbs, 3 8 inch NPT by 5 8 inch barb, uh, we like to use a little Permatex Aviation brand as a thread sealer. One of the nice features of the Moy Marine 501 pedestal pump is that it uses the same impeller as the Oberdorfer 202M series, as well as the Moy Marine flange pump. This will make future water pump rebuilds a little bit easier. Our first step at the engine is to loosen the alternator support arm bolt. You can do this with a half inch wrench followed by the alternator mounting bolt at the lifting eye bracket, which will take a 9 16 inch wrench. Next, remove the spark plug wire at the distributor cap end, the one closest to the alternator pulley. Uh, it will be in the way. Go ahead and remove your alternator belt. You can set that aside. We won't be needing it. Take the new belt that came with your kit slip it over the alternator pulley, then around behind the accessory drive pulley. To make things easier, we're going to disassemble the pump bracket. Loosen the pivot bolt all the way so you can remove the right angle mounting bar. Now let's go ahead and remove one of the aft housing mounting bolts. It's the one directly to the right of the flange pump. You can do this with a half inch wrench. You can set that aside, you won't be needing it. Take the new bolt and washer in the kit and go ahead and bolt the right angle mounting bar on. Try to get it nice and level. Now as we line things up, you may find it helpful to leave this bolt just loose enough for the mounting bar to rotate. You can fully tighten it once the bracket installation is complete. Now take the pump assembly, pull the belt out, go ahead and angle the pulley in behind the belt. Then pivot it to the left so the pump bracket rests on top of and next to the accessory drive. Now go ahead and retighten the pivot bolt. Do your best to true up the pump so the pulleys are in alignment and the belt looks straight. As you tighten the pivot bolt fully, the pump will start to square itself up. Loosen the pivot bolt as needed and keep adjusting the pump assembly until it looks straight. When you think you're there, go ahead and fully tighten the pivot bolt. 
That's almost perfect. I'm going to loosen the set screws and make one last adjustment. I'm going to tap the pulley to the right just a little bit. There, that looks nice and straight. And if you haven't already, this would be a good time to give a final tightening to the right angle mounting bar bolt. Great, that should do it. It's time to tension our belt. I'm using a medium sized crowbar, but you could also use a large screwdriver. Let the edge of the bar rest on the upper edge of the water jacket side plate. Being careful not to pry on the side plate T-fitting. Now pry up and lift the alternator. As you do so, the belt will tighten. We're looking for approximately half an inch of belt travel between the pulleys. Maintain the tension on your bar and keep lifting the alternator as you tighten the alternator support arm bolt. And now we'll tighten up the alternator mounting bolt at the lifting eye bracket. And we'll get that good and tight. i take one final look here. That looks nice and straight. Good to go. And now we can reconnect our spark plug wire back to the distributor cap. At this point you can put your hose barbs on with a little bit of sealer and continue on with the rest of your plumbing. Thank you for your time. Please visit our website at moyamarine.com. There you'll find parts and services for the Atomic 4. The freshwater cooling and seawater pump kits mentioned in this video can be found under the cooling section of our online catalog.